So I was lucky enough to sit down and have the pleasure of talking to fellow author and YouTuber, Jamie Gray. Um, if you don't know who she is, she's a really nice person, as you'll see in the interview. Lots of character, uh, lots of enthusiasm for writing, and I won't spoil it too much. In fact, we'll probably just jump into the interview now, uh, and we'll see what Jamie had to say. And obviously, I'll put all the links to her work um, in the description below. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's jump in and see how it went when I spoke to Jamie Gray. So thank you for coming on the channel today, then, Jamie. No problem. I'm happy to. Um, some of you may have heard she is American. Um, she is not only a fantastic author, but also has a fantastic YouTube channel, which I will link in the description below. Um, oh, thank you. I'm actually Canadian, although everyone oh, makes that mistake, obviously. Yeah. Yes, I think I think you've told me that as well in a message, and I still said you was American. <laughs> so, um, before we get to talking about um, your book that is released, and I know you've got some other work that you're working on now. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into writing? When did you start? Um, okay, well, I am 18 years old right now, which a lot of people are very surprised about. <laughs> um, I'm 18 and I started writing back when I was like, probably like in elementary school, like in grade seven or grade eight. Uh, I originally started by writing like scripts and stuff like that because I was like really into like film. Um, but as I got older, I realized that just film wasn't for me. <laughs> So I just sort of uh, pivoted because I just like the idea of telling stories. So I was like, okay, well, what's a different way of me to tell stories that isn't film? And I sort of pivoted onto writing books. And I, I thought that that would be um, the best way for me to do it where I was in total control of what kind of story I wrote and how like large scale it was or whatever. Cause I had these big scale ideas in my head that just, yeah. I was like, I can't make that happen on film without having a huge crazy budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's where I kind of turned to and I did like, I think I made like two or three different series uh, of books just for fun, just to sort of get used to writing um, until I finally started working on the book that or the book series that I'm working to publish now. And uh, I worked on that first book that's now published. <laughs> I worked on it for probably like two or three years before I actually gained the courage to publish it. And that was just like so many different drafts, so many different rewrites, and it was a real battle of like uh, getting the confidence <laughs> to yeah, actually publish. Yeah. Did you did you still do all the normal teenage things like a lot of people at your high school that age are getting a driving license, they're going out and getting drunk against the parents' wishes? Did you still do all that <laughs> rebellious teenage years, or were you quite mature at a young age and you thought, no, this is my passion, I'm going to focus on this? Um, honestly, I was very much of like the latter. I was very much like, I'm like, I have this dream. I'm going to make it happen. I'm not going to let anyone else like, uh, like I didn't like the idea of like rel relying on other people to make my dream come true, um, which was writing a book and telling stories. Uh, but I still had like fun and whatnot. Like I, luckily a lot of my friends that I hung out with were like super into like storytelling as well. Like a lot of them wanted to be actors. That's why I kind of oh, hopped yeah. into the directing role. A lot of them wanted to be actors because I was like uh, a drama kid. I was like in the drama club. Um, so luckily there was like a lot of like, com like we all had like a common interest in that sense. So it was something that we could like talk about all the time. And like, we'd make short films for fun when we were like having like play dates or whatever. Um, so that kind of stuff was like my, like going crazy. I, I was never really a crazy <laughs> kid. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Yeah. You lived your crazy through your passions, which is, is, which is great to tell people more people should do that. There'd be less trouble, but. You know, that is <laughs> less trouble for the parents. <laughs> so, so let's get on to your book then. So, you have one book that's actually published, and that's in paperback oh. and ebook. Is it in hardback as well? It isn't in hardback. I, I worked very hard to try and figure out how to do that, but it was a whole thing with the dimensions, and <laughs> it was just yeah, it was I don't a little blame you. My, 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 my book's coming out just in paperback and ebook to start with. We'll, we'll work out hardback eventually down the line, but I, I agree with you. It's just yeah. too much hassle, and, and it was it was not fun to work out. So, so the first book's out then, and you say it's part of a series. So are you currently working on the second one? Are you currently on the sequel? Because I know from your YouTube channel, you've been doing some um, stories on um, Wattpad. So where are you at yeah. with the sequel at the moment? The sequel I started working on like immediately after, like I knew uh, where I wanted to take it. Uh, like a part of the reason why it took so long for the first book to come out was because I was spending so much time figuring out the series. <laughs> so I was like, I need to know where things go. Yeah. Um, so I knew where I wanted to take the second book and I immediately started working on it. But then uh, I had like quarantine happened. And then I also had like major back surgery. So that pushed it back like 
six months where I wasn't even really working on it. So it's taken a while to come out. I think it's coming up on two-ish years now that I've been working on it. Okay. Um, but it's it's getting to that like end stage where you're looking for uh, professional editors and then a cover design. So it's getting, it's very, very close to that stage now. Um, and then the Wattpad stuff, that stuff is more, cause something I wanted to do to make my channel kind of stand out a little bit more. Cause like, you know, every channel has to have, have like something that makes it unique or makes it stand yeah, out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was what I just kind of decided to do was like, I was going to do like writing challenges because I hadn't really seen that too much. Mm -hmm. So when I finished those writing challenges though, like some of them, I was like really, really proud of. And I was like, well, I'm not going to take the time to like, fit, like publish these like professionally. Like there's not really any point in that. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, let's just post it to Wattpad and like, see how it does. And it was mostly just to like, show people what I came up with. Yeah, <laughs> um, and some people even like really liked it and they were like oh my gosh this is so cool or I love your YouTube channel I'm so glad you did this so I feel like it's starting to gain some popularity which is fun um but I don't ever expect to like make any kind of money from Wattpad and, or anything like that and would you ever consider the, the stories that you've put on Wattpad would you ever consider releasing um like a, a book of short stories where you combine them all into one or is it just something that you're thinking Wattpad for now and then back to your series yeah, I'm thinking just for Wattpad right now, but okay. I'm all I'm very open and like very flexible. So if like they gain a lot of popularity or people want to see them like go more in depth, then I would 100% go back and like tackle them again, maybe put them into like a big book of short stories or something like that at some point. But um, right now I don't have plans to do that, but who knows <laughs> in the future it might happen. <laughs> so you talked about the back surgery there. So was there any point because like you said, it was six months that it pushed the book back. So was there any point during the surgery and during the, the rehabilitation that you thought, I'm probably not gonna go back to writing now? Was there anything that put you off or did it make you more determined to just carry on and push on through it and make a success of it? Um, well, I think there was a large, it was a lot of factors. <laughs> um, I think the main factor was just like the amount of pain that it was, because it, for anyone who doesn't know, it's, uh, I had spinal fusion, which is like uh, fixing uh, scoliosis where the spine is like curved and it's basically like putting a cast over your spine to make it straight again is basically what it is um so that's kind of what I went through and it was incredibly painful the most painful difficult thing I've ever gone through and uh honestly I think that like the biggest thing was that how painful it was to like sit in a chair yeah. um I found that it was either the most comfortable to just lie down flat or be walking around for some reason sitting down in a chair was just the most uncomfortable thing so that would like really stood me in my way of like sitting at a desk and like starting to work on stuff. Um, I all like for the longest time though, I still wanted to get into it. I wanted to get it, but it was just like, that being said, it was still like a lack of motivation. So it's like, well, as soon as I sit down, it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm not going to be able to get into it. So it was just like those uh, things standing in the way. And the longer I went without writing, the harder it was to get back into it. Uh, cause again, just sitting down for so long was like yeah. super uncomfortable and I couldn't get into it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it took like six months, six months or so before I got, uh, back into actually writing somewhat consistently, but even still it was like, and I've talked about this on my channel a couple of times, but like finding the motivation, like even like up till recent months was like really, really tough to like yeah. be writing most days a week or like for X amount of hours or whatever. It was really, really tough. Well, I'm glad you kept going because as I say like you're gaining momentum like you said on Wattpad and you're on the sequel now on your YouTube channel I, I, I say I've watched a few of your videos and my favorite thing about your YouTube channel is not even just the content before we get onto the content it's just that you're very yourself on the videos like you sit there and you, you, you'll be talking about it and you'll have a smile on your face and you're very down to earth there's no sort of pretense and I watch some YouTube channels and there is a lot of like they're doing it for the camera but you just really seem to enjoy what you're doing and and you do have quite a, a heavy schedule like you say you put out videos or podcasts most days of the week so on average would you say you write more or would you say you create content more i absolutely create content more <laughs> um i guess i guess you could kind of argue differently when it comes to the hours spent but um i post because i have like i have multiple channel channels if you include the uh podcast stuff but I have my author channel and then I have a channel that is like more talking about like my experience with my surgery and it's a bit more about that kind of stuff um and then I have two podcasts which is a writing podcast and then uh sort of a surgery podcast 
So in total, I'm post I'm posting like th or uh, five videos a week, and that is quite a lot on my schedule, especially since I try to make each video as good as it possibly can be. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, not everything's going to be the best thing out there, but <laughs> I try my best to like uh, uh, make it as enjoyable as possible. Like I like just being very like uh, light and like try to be comedic sometimes in my videos because I find that there is a bit of a lack on that when it comes to author tube. It feels not every channel. I haven't obviously seen every channel, but I find a lot of channels that I watch on author tube. Everyone is very serious. Yeah. And yeah I, agree, I don't know. Yeah. I just like need some levity sometimes just to kind of laugh at yourself or something like that. If you can't laugh at yourself and other people won't laugh at you, I think that's very important to just keep it. Yeah. Keep it natural. And if you can add that comedic element, which you do on your channel, I say I've, I've watched Jamie's channel a few times and not just because of the interview, I watched it beforehand and that's how I met her and I spoke to her on Instagram. And I, I, I like the channel. There's a lot of channels out there. And again, I do think that they are very, very serious. Um, and maybe it's different genres. Like if you write in certain genres, then maybe there's a more yeah. serious tone to it and there's a bit more, you know. But I do find that some people on YouTube when talking about their, you know, their author tube or, or just books in general, they're, they're very serious about it and they don't allow that element of fun. And I think that you do that on your channel. I think it comes across in your videos as well. So I think that's mm -hmm. that's a raging success from that from that point of view. I think you're doing really well with that. So keep up the good work, please. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one more thing that I was going to talk to you about is, like I said, you do have your podcast. So what is is the podcast similar to the YouTube channel in the sense that you talk about the same sort of stuff um, but in a podcast, or do you have different content available? Um, on my podcast right now, I haven't had put, I haven't put out like too many episodes yet, but for the most part, it's, I find that I enjoy mostly doing like more debates with myself <laughs> on podcasts and like talking about two different, uh, uh, well, it could be whatever, but, um, one I did recently was like publishing formally versus publishing on Wattpad was one I kind of debated with myself and talked about like the pros and the cons for both of them. Um, I think that just like strikes up a really interesting conversation with people and, obviously I give my opinion and I always try to speak on my own experiences I never want to say like oh I know everything uh yeah. <laughs> anytime because I'm like I absolutely don't uh so I always try to just uh stick to my experience and what I've heard from other people and stuff like that and just try to bring it to some kind of uh just bring it whatever information I possibly can to the table and uh if people want to talk about it they can talk about it if they want to ask questions they can ask questions and I don't know, I think it's just fun to sort of bring that up in a podcast form rather than in a video form. I find it works a bit better, but yeah. Okay, that's cool. And and how did you get into the podcast? Was that something that you had an idea of or did someone suggest to you that you might be good at the podcast? Um, well, I started my I started the writing podcast like way back when I first started my author YouTube channel because I did a lot of research like before getting on YouTube because I wanted to understand like how to be successful and things like that. And uh, one thing that some like a lot of people were saying is like try to get on as many platforms as possible and a yeah. uh, podcast was obviously one of them so I was like okay cool I, I can talk let's just try doing a <laughs> podcast <laughs> so I tried it and it was like it was the simplest thing like I literally just like recorded on my phone and like uh, like cut it together on my phone and just posted it um, and that was maybe like two-ish years ago that I started that um, but I got off of it I think mostly because of school and I think just like the uploading schedule was a lot for me yeah. So I stopped doing that. And then just recently I realized like, oh, I have, I have some time on my hands. I have, uh, like, I want to start putting out some extra content. Why not bring the podcast back? <laughs> and people yeah. uh, were excited about that. So I figured why not? Brilliant. So obviously still 18. Have, have, have you finished with education now? You've decided like further education is not for you. And then the book career um and the youtube podcast all that creating stuff is that that is for you now yeah that that's definitely your route you're not thinking well maybe i could take a year out and then go to, to college or, or is that definitely for you i think that's where i am right now like things could obviously change in the future if i'm like i want to go for school for this um but right now it just doesn't really seem like it's in the books for me like i'm i like ever since quarantine like i started doing this and i like fell in love with it uh since i literally could do nothing else uh so i think that this has just been like it's been doing wonders for my mental health and it's just uh, such motivation for me to have like, from like, it's kind of like a two-way street. Like a lot of people say like, oh, your videos inspire me, they motivate me. And honestly, it's like a two-way street, like people commenting and people like viewing the channel and like uh, talking to me on Instagram, like talking to me about stuff uh, is very motivating to me <laughs> to keep making yeah. content and keep writing. But now that you've mentioned that, that does, that does resonate actually about 
people having a mental health um, issue is something that, at least with the YouTube and the podcast, but they can still contact you and still be sociable without actually having to put themselves out there to real people in the real life world, effectively, with other. Have you considered doing any talking on mental health or have you done any on your channel that I've not seen? Um, I haven't done anything on like author topics. Maybe that'll be a video in the future. Who knows? <laughs> now that you've given me the idea. Uh, but I <laughs> have done a mental health video on uh, my surgery channel because that was like a huge thing that I, deal, I, I had to deal with and that I've had a lot of people DMing me about like how tough it is on their mental health with the pain and the recovery, uh, long recovery process. And I thought that it was like really important to like address that because I hadn't like, like the main reason I wanted to create that channel about the surgery was because like there was very little information out there when I first had it and uh like that was just what I wanted I just wanted like blogs of what it was like after surgery I wanted information about how it would work and what the recovery would be like and I wanted to put that out there and mental health I found was like one of the biggest things that you had to deal with besides the pain and <laughs> no one was talking about it so I wanted to address it in that video and uh it was definitely one of the tougher ones to make because yeah. obviously you're being vulnerable but uh, so far, it's all been very, very positive, and a lot of people have been thanking me for that video, which was very, very encouraging. It made me feel really good about finally doing that, which is great. So, have you had any long-term issues from the surgery now? Are we completely away from that now? Your your body feels good, mentally you feel good. Are you going forward now? So that's all behind you. There's no no chance of a relapse or anything like that with what will happen to the, the spine and the surgery. Um, I don't believe so. Uh, right now, my pain is pretty much gone. I just mm -hmm. sort of describe it as like stiffness at this point. Um, and that's kind of unavoidable with like yeah. holes in your back. Um, I'm back to doing pretty much everything I used to do, uh, like activity and exercise wise. And my flexibility is pretty much back to normal. So all of that is fine. The only thing I'm personally worried about is something like the screws coming out or the rods bending, which is a thing that can happen with age. So I have no clue if that can happen or if it will happen. It might not, uh, but that's just something I just have to be aware of in the future. <laughs> if there's nothing I can really do to prevent that, aside from just doing nothing, which doesn't sound very fun. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, no, doing yeah, nothing doesn't nothing sound really. fun. No, no it's not my style. <laughs> so, how many books roughly? Going back to the book, how many books roughly have you planned in the series? Is it is it a trilogy? Is there, is there four? Is it is there Wheel of Time? Is there going to be like 18, 20? <laughs> oh man, that would be oh, that would be many years of my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I currently am uh, I'm aiming for about five books. That might change. I feel like that is just how I am. <laughs> I change my mind all the time. Uh, right now it's at five books though, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, I have an ending. Like the ending was something that was like really really tough for me like I knew kind of what I wanted the ending to be but I kept on changing my mind and I kept on being like oh but what if this and that changes and finally now I think I really have something that is like super super like solid and I know exactly that's how I want to end the book and that makes sense with the story and the themes whatever um so right now I feel like it's pretty solid I don't think it's going to change but I can say that now and then tomorrow I'll be like nope never mind <laughs> I want to do something else have you got a rough timeline for the sequel to come out yet? I know you said that you're close to press edits, but are we sort of talking end of this year? Or would it potentially be 2023? I am going to aim for this year. Um, I feel like I'd be very disappointed if it took longer than this year. Um, usually edits, I'm going to assume, are going to take at least two or three months per edit. Uh, so I'm assuming probably around the end of the year, if not uh, mid to late of the year <laughs> is my guess but i honestly i'm not i'm not totally sure i say i connected with her on instagram um so make sure you check out her instagram make sure you check out her youtube and her, her podcast um and if you've got anything with it on the wattpad that you can link as well then i'll, I'll put that in the description as well okay so right, i just want to say thank you to jamie um, for coming on the channel um, it was very nice to talk to you um rather nice than just to via messages um very positive person um so make sure you do reach out to jamie on her youtube channel if you do watch her channel and do watch her videos just make me leave a nice comment what did you think um i look forward to seeing more of your books in the future um i've awesome. really enjoyed watching your youtube channel and it's been a pleasure to talk to you today so i just want to say again thank you very much thank you for having me this is one of my first interviews so that was fun <laughs> yeah it was and and again it's it's strange to 
where we've been closed off for so many years um, because of the, 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 the pandemic and stuff, it, it is strange. Like I talk a lot to a lot of other writers through Twitter or through Instagram um, mm-hmm. or, or, or Facebook groups. And it's, it's very strange. I've only spoken to a few people like this. So it is nice to actually interact with someone rather than just reading a message. Because sometimes you read a message and you don't know what the, you can read the message, but you don't understand the tone of the message. Did they find what they yeah. funny or they just, you know, they're excited about it. So it's nice to actually be able to talk to someone and actually gauge their response to what you're saying as well. So, Yeah, for sure. It's totally different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you once again for coming on the channel then, Jamie. Um, make sure you check out everything that Jamie's got going on. Um, fantastic world by a really nice person, as you can see. She's full of enthusiasm. Uh, I love her, how honest and real she is on the videos. So please go and check her out. So that's basically all I've got for you today then. Um, I had a great time talking to Jamie. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Um, I've just got the prize draw winner to do for today. And don't forget the book comes out in two days time now. Um, it is Saturday when you watch this. So the book comes out in two days time. So you can still pre-order before then, either today or tomorrow. And you can be in for a chance to win some more prizes next week. I'll do a prize draw next week for after the release for the big bundle for everyone. So if you want to pre-order or you've not pre-ordered yet, now's your chance. Um, today's pre-order winner for Tuesday, because we're today. Thank you for joining me again. I've got another interview with another author coming up next week, something completely different again. Um, so hopefully if you're interested in listening to other authors other than me, Yakaron, you can join me for that as well. Have a great day. Um, enjoy the, the rest of the weekend and I'll see you again soon here on Yonski Writes. Peace.